This week we're celebrating our 100th episode. So we're going to go and explain everything that we've been through, where the project is going. We're gonna ask, answer some uh, pressing questions that you all have asked. We're gonna give you a little peek behind the curtain of you know, the Duracell project. So thank you again, everybody, so much for helping support the project by being a viewer, a Patreon, everybody. My name is Matt. Follow along as I turn Duracell, the legendary ocean racing sailboat, into a comfortable cruising home. We moved to Duracell from a town outside Seattle to our home in Port Townsend on June 16th, 2021, which was the hottest day of the year. It had taken a couple years of planning just to get to this point, and we couldn't believe our luck at finding such a special boat. Nor could we believe that we had pulled the trigger to take on such a wild project. We had no idea what was in store for us. So here is a two minute overview of the major projects we've tackled on the boat in the last two years. First, we stripped the boat of all the hardware, machinery, plumbing, electrical, and electronics, and then started cutting the boat apart to remove the cockpit and the old doghouse. And so the first big construction project was to build the big new doghouse. Then the next summer, we extended the transom out to make the new cockpit bigger and to add a swim step. The next winter, we moved to the interior and cut out the ballast tanks, modifying them to hold fresh water. We started on the living space by building a master stateroom, a head, and workbench. Later, we built the new cockpit benches and combings. We removed all the old chain plates and built new carbon fiber chain plates for the shrouds and head stays. And more recently, we cut the new deadlights in the hull and built a very cool new bowsprit. We have about a million projects left to do. So starting from the beginning, here's what we have left. The next big project is moving back into the interior of the boat. We're, it's moving towards winter here. And so I, can, I have to stop working outside, come to the inside of the boat. And there's a lot left to do in here. The construction of the galley, the salon, the nav station, the quarter berths, the benches and the dog house. I would like to get as much of that done as I can this coming winter. And so this project to finish the interior is one of the last big fiberglassing projects that we have left to do. We can kind of see the light at the end of the tunnel of the fiberglass construction era of the project. Of course, all over the boat there will be little projects to do, but the big stuff is left here in the interior of the boat. And we are keenly aware of the fact that we do, like our channel is based on fiberglass work up to this point. And I love doing the fiberglass work. It's really satisfying to me. And we're frankly pretty surprised that people keep watching. And so, you know, a lot of people think that I'm the sicko for doing all this fiberglass work, but you're the sickos for keep continuing to watch this. And so- And we love you. Yes, we really, really appreciate it. And we're glad that you're enjoying it, but uh, it'll be really fun to move on from that work and start getting into all the everything else that has, has to happen to get this boat in the water. Another huge project that has to happen is we are going to paint the boat hopefully next summer. I would like to do it at the, like the latter half of next summer. 
There's a lot of things on the deck that still need to be done and to get ready. And I also would like to extend the boat shed to cover the entire boat. And that is for dust containment and to keep the boat clean while we're painting. We're extremely excited and lucky to have Interlux on board. They're going to provide all the paint and primer and fairing everything to get the boat painted. After the interior is built and mostly painted, then we can start focusing on the systems that are gonna be installed in the boat, which I'm hoping to work on all of next winter. Obviously another huge project, but because we have to install a propulsion system, which we're planning on doing a serial hybrid electric propulsion system, which I'm very excited to get into. We're still in the design stages of it, but it should be a really fun project. And then obviously there's electrical, electronics, plumbing, heating, mechanical and steering. Steering, we have a really f exciting announcement about in the future. It will be a totally different phase of the project, totally different than what we're doing now. And uh, it'll be a really fun uh, project, many, many different projects to uh, showcase on the channel. Next big project that has to be done is modifying the keel. So this is, we haven't talked about this very much at all on the channel yet, but this is, the original keel, it is 10 feet long. So it, with when it's bolted onto the boat, it has a 12 foot draft, which is far too deep for practical cruising purposes. So it has to be modified. This, I mean, it, this is also in pretty big disrepair. Real quickly, so there's a seam right here. Below this is all lead. And then above this seam is cort and steel. These two are bolted together. Ideally, what I'd like to do is reuse this cort and steel part and recast the lead. It is uh, 10 and a half thousand pounds. Yeah, what I would like to do, like I said, is reuse the cort and steel part, recast the, the lead into a bulb to get the draft down to something like eight feet, I think is a realistic number to both keep the boat relatively high performance for a cruising boat while getting a shorter draft so we can anchor in you know, tighter spots. This is obviously a really big project. I have no idea what I'm doing when it comes to metallurgy and making sure that this court and steel part is in good enough shape. There's, I'm gonna need a lot of help with this part, but we're really excited to get it done. I'm hoping that maybe next summer we can start working on it. Evan and I, the Naval architect, we've been talking about this uh, starting to make a plan for how we can figure out how we can modify it. You know, what's really important is the weight distribution in the boat. And so one question that somebody asked was how, what my plan is for keeping the boat on its lines and how I'm doing it is keeping track of the weight that we're taking out of the boat and putting back into the boat. And then I'm going to be estimating with all the systems that we install in the mast what the boat will weigh and how the weight will be, dis be distributed in the boat with all that stuff. And then we can modify the keel to keep the boat in balance. It's gonna be a big fun project, a lot different than everything else we've been doing, but uh, a really important one, obviously. So I'm trying to break these projects down into kind of big picture projects. And the last one that has to be done, there's a crow barking at me over here. The last one that has to be done is the mast and rig. So this is the mast that we bought in California from the LA Maritime Institute. And it is off an Andrew 70, which is an ultralight displacement boat that they designed to sail from California to Hawaii. They still race all over the place. This boat had replaced their mast with the carbon one. And so we got the uh, old aluminum mast. It is 81 feet long and we are going to chop the top six feet off. I'm going to move the spreaders, change it from an inline spreader rig to a swept spreader rig. So we have to build spreaders, we have to paint it, obviously rig the whole thing, and then you know, put together the, all the running rigging on the boat, as well as all the hardware and everything that goes uh, along with the whole sailing rig. So obviously another huge project and it would, I could spend an hour or more just talking to you about everything that has to happen for uh, just to get the boat, the masts, the mast standing in the boat and the boat sailing. So another big fun project to look forward to. And I feel like I'm getting ahead of myself by even talking about this because it uh, seems too far away at this point. But 
The last thing to do is once the mast is put together, once the keel is modified, once the boat has all the systems painted, is all finished, then we'll uh, you know, get the movers in here, pick up the boat, pick up the keel and the mast and move it all down out, <laughs> out through here and then down the driveway and down to the boat yard where we'll put everything together and uh, go sailing, I guess. Can you say it? Launch? Launch the boat. <laughs> it will happen. Yeah, it will happen. Hopefully, maybe by episode 200. We'll see. It's a, it's a lofty, ambitious goal, but you know, we gotta, we gotta do our best. So last week we asked for uh, big questions you all have about the project. So um, we took kind of the, the really big ones and we're going to try to answer them for you. So the first one is timeline. So we touched on this a little bit already, but originally the plan was for me to finish by my 40th birthday, which would be in a little over a year. So now what I'm going to try and do is get it done by the time, like during my 40th year, so which would give me an extra almost a year. So um, it's still very, very ambitious and obviously depends a lot on how the YouTube channel goes and everything. So uh, still two years is what I'm hoping for. Future sailing plans. Uh, we have not made any solid plans. We're trying to not think about it as much as possible. We're enjoying the journey of the project for now. Uh, we are building the boat and designing it to be great for cruising in, uh, up north in Alaska and cruising in the Pacific. Um, but like I said, we haven't made any hard and fast plans. And we're pretty open. Uh, don't hold us to it, but one idea we have for a shakedown cruise is doing a loop around from here to Hawaii, um, and then north to the Aleutian Islands, and then down the coast through Alaska and BC, and back home. So it would be kind of a, a downwind loop. Yeah, nice shakedown cruise. Yeah, so that's, that's a possibility for a shakedown cruise. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see really, really crazy plans. Like, we would love to sail to Norway since I'm uh, partially Norwegian and speak Norwegian. And since Matt has Norwegian ancestry, that would be a dream. That's a long ways to Norway, but we have the boat to do it. Yep. This is a big question. The cost so far. Uh... Okay, so I have calculated how much it costs, or how much we've spent on it so far. And this is literally just every penny that we've put into the materials. Uh, and things like the bow shed, the mast, transportation, um, everything that we've spent to get the boat to the current point it is. And it's, so, far we, so far we've spent $57,000. Uh, that does not include like my labor, Yanni's labor to make the videos. We do pay ourselves a little bit, uh, but that is just the cost of materials, basically. And there's no way we could afford this without YouTube. Yeah, it's... Uh, and our patrons. The, the YouTube channel has, and the patrons have made this project possible for what it is. If we were... If the YouTube channel had not become what it is now, we would be doing this project totally differently. Dumpster diving for materials and, uh, you know, scrounging and buying secondhand, whatever we could. YouTube has, and sponsorships have made it possible for us to build uh, a more higher end yacht uh, than that we could normally afford. And also the role of sponsorship has been huge in this project specifically total boat who is supplying all of our epoxy is a huge cost that they are, have been just wonderful to us and i think they sell a great product and we're you know we we could not get to the point that we're at without them and also interlux and all grip we haven't gotten to utilize them as 
uh, as much yet, but they will be they will play a huge part in this project. We're hoping to get more sponsors, obviously, and anybody who's interested, you can contact us. But um, yeah, it's a big part of how we afford this project. Matt and I have also recently been discussing how great it would be to be able to hire someone, um, even part time, you know, maybe two days a week or three days a week. Uh, we we can't afford that right now, but it's a goal. You know, if our channel and Patreon community continues to grow, that would be a goal for us is to hire someone. Yeah, it would just help the project go a little bit faster. So. And be fun. Yeah, it would be fun to have somebody else around to work with every day. Besides, I mean, my mom's here all the time. Yeah, Matt. Mm -hmm. We yeah, mm -hmm. Matt's mom is here about once a week, once mm -hmm. every couple of weeks. And then we definitely get help from friends, local friends and patrons, which is which is a huge help. Right. But having someone like consistently here, you know, every, you know, two or three days a week would be huge. Yep. So that's a goal. So this is another big question, sequencing of projects. A lot of you asked how we how, how Matt plans out projects and also how, you know, documenting this whole refit on YouTube uh, impacts that. The planning of projects. Yeah. And how I plan the projects is kind of seasonal, I would say, in that we work on the inside of the boat during the winter and the outside of the boat during the summertime. During a project, I'll have kind of two more projects, one on deck, one another project on deck that I'm getting ready for, maybe like buying materials, and then another project further that I'm planning out that I'm kind of in the design phase of. As I'm finishing a project like the cockpit, then I was, you know, buying materials for the bowsprit kind of thing. So, and that's how I kind of sequence my projects. Like right now I'm getting ready to finishing the doghouse and then I'm gonna to move to the interior and start uh, building out the galley and stuff like that. So I'll be getting materials ready for that. I can speak to the part about how YouTube influences it. I think we really try in every episode to have closure, um, even if it's a s closure on a small project within a bigger project. Um, like obviously this dog house is several episodes, but we try not to leave the episode like hanging mid project. Um, and sometimes that works out really naturally. It takes Matt about a week to finish a project or a few small projects. Other times that means Matt is racing the clock and working really late, sometimes even Tuesday night. Um, before, or Wednesday morning. Or, or Wednesday morning um, in order to have that closure on a project, in order to create sort of a coherent episode. Um, so that's something that we've kind of learned and that intuitively feels right to us. Um, we are pretty close to real time right now which is not ideal, a goal of ours is to get a little bit ahead of you guys, even if it's just by a couple weeks. So, um, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of prep work for every project. Like we kind of show the, like the meat, the good stuff, but there's always a ton of cutting and sanding and tedious stuff that takes, that is like unfilmable basically. And so we, like I said, just try to make each episode as interesting as we can, uh, and which takes can take a lot of time that is not filming. So We haven't actually calculated this, but I think you work 70 hours a week. It depends on the week, for sure. But yeah, we put, we put in a lot of hours. And I probably spend 10 to 20 hours a week filming and editing. I know it's a big range, but it does seem to vary, depending on how focused I am. Someone asked if there's a lot of waste and how we manage that. Yeah, and the, the construction method that I'm using with epoxy and doing a lot of vacuum bagging, there are extra materials that I need to make the vacuum bagging work. And uh, some of them are like single use materials, things like peel ply. Peel ply is literally one use and so uh, I use it once and it gets thrown away. And then there are other things like the bag and the felt and that kind of thing. And there's all kinds of other disposables that I use that I 
that uh, eventually get thrown away. And the fact is that yes, there is there there can be a lot of waste. I try to reuse as many things as I can. I was just gonna say it's something we we both really care about. We love our beautiful earth. We love the ocean. It's something we both having as little impact, uh, negative impact is something that really matters to both of us. Um, and I think it is very much worth saying that we are upcycling this boat. You know, when John, the previous owner, was looking for someone to take on this project, uh, in two years of him searching, we're the only ones who stepped forward. So I, I don't know, but it's possible that this boat could have been headed to a landfill. So it is, in the big picture, an upcycling project. Um, and there's a lot less waste going into this boat than building a boat totally from scratch. And hopefully it will get used for many, many years to come. Someone asked if there's a book that Matt recommends for uh, folks interested in boat design. My favorite book has been uh, Dashu's Offshore Cruising Encyclopedia. It's a really fun read and it uh, sets your expectations for uh, what makes a great cruising boat and how to get out cruising as quickly as possible. Yeah, that's my that's my favorite book for just like motiv motivating myself to like pursue the best cruising boat, I guess. There's a lot of like boat design philosophy in it. Boat design philosophy, but also like what makes a great cruising boat and what to expect when you're out cruising. A lot of folks are asking us if we've chosen a name yet. Uh, we only uh, shared our possible names with you a few weeks ago during our Patreon event that we had, um, and we have not decided yet. There are three contenders. There's Duracell, Dugnat, and Doug for short, yep. and Spirit of the Woods. And we actually really like all three names, so we don't know yet. We have a lot of time to figure it out, and we're open to anything. Are you leaning towards one? No, because I am, you know, still waiting for any other ones to come down the pipeline and, you know, take our breath away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we feel extremely fortunate to have gotten to 100 episodes and thank you so much for sticking with us. We'll get back to boat work next week and uh, thanks again for watching. Yeah, you all are part of this journey and helping us make it possible. Um, so we are very grateful for that. And uh, if there are any questions we didn't answer, you can pop them in the comments and we'll try to answer them. Bye.